So let me start by saying I am a big fan of your work, and I want to thank you for uh, talking with me today. It's a pleasure, Steve. If um, I like throwing some curveballs at the beginning. If someone has actually never seen anything that you've done, what would you like them to watch first? The Mission, I think. Oh, yeah. That's kind of good. Mm. Just, just kind of. I'm joking. It's very good. Um, when, you were make, when you were making The Lion King and voicing Scar, did you have any idea at the time that the film was going to become what it became, this, this massive film around the planet? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I mean, I did. I was doing working for the Royal Shakespeare Company at the time, and, and I was just glad to be working in a different metier. I'd never made an animated feature before, and, uh, and the, the freedom that it gave me um, uh, was, was enormous. And we had huge fun. They encouraged me to, you know, play around, ad lib, to find sort of, you know, find qualities. Uh, which they would then go on and draw up. I'd always thought it happened the other way around, that the the vocal artist, uh, you know, put his lines on a picture that was already there. But no, that wasn't the way. So um, uh, I had no idea whether it would be any good at all. I think I was shooting House of the Spirits in Portugal when Jeffrey Kassenberg, who ran Disney at the time, rang up and said, um, I have to tell you something extraordinary has happened with Scar. He's... Um, He's actually become enormous as a, and and I thought, oh, that's very nice. I didn't say, and will the check be in the post? Um, <laughs> because it was Disney, of course, and they only deal in supermarket stamps, I think. Um, but uh, anyway, the check didn't appear. But but I knew they were very pleased, and uh, and I then went on to see how uh, what an enormous enormous success the film was. I was very proud of it. Yeah. I as well you should be. Speaking of something else you should be proud of, I think that um, Watchmen, the other two years ago, is, is a stunning achievement. Um, did you have any idea it was going to be so fantastic when you were making it? No, I knew it was going to be uh, extraordinary because the writer, the man who wrote it, was extraordinary, had an extraordinary mind. And sitting with him at lunch when we first started talking about it and he talked me through my part of my area of the of the story um i thought well this is going to be something like something i've never seen before i really want to be part of it and i was not disappointed when i saw it finished yeah it's fantastic um mm. jumping into house of gucci uh a no more tremendous work from you um Ridley is a very unique filmmaker in the way that he uses multiple cameras um, and he, he's a unique person on set. Can you sort of talk about collaborating with him and maybe what surprised you? Well, of course, I worked with him on, on um, uh, Kingdom of Heaven about 20 years ago, but that was a very big film. I didn't see a lot of him because he was usually in some tent a mile away with one of the cameras, always multiple cameras, which meet, make, which is essential on a film of that size. On a film of our size, a more domestic uh, size, although he's, I think, turned it into a sort of epic tragedy uh, with, his, with his style. Um, the great thing is having multiple cameras. I mean, we had, I think, four, um, which allows you to play a scene in a certain way and then do another take, play it completely differently, and you don't have to worry about matching because it's all covered. And that's in, enormously freeing for an actor um, because if you are at the back of your mind, part of your mind is saying, I've got to remember this happened th at that point in the scene or he said that at this point in the scene. And then when you turn around to replicate the scene, uh, you have to do it the same. This frees you up from that. So that was that was a great thing. I found Ridley had mellowed in the twenty years. Um, he's you know he's always been a pretty taciturn northerner, um, but he's got slightly less taciturn in those twenty years. He runs a wonderful set, very calm, uh, encouraging. I mean, 
what he does, he gets the best because he knows the business so well. He's made, he's made so many films. He knows the best people, the people he likes to work with. He also knows a lot of actors and he's, you know, he, I think he chose quite well because he, he got a group together who, who would work together as a family, sort of became a family. Um, and that's part of his talent. Uh, but, 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 but really I, what I thank him for most is the speed, you know, I love, filming is very laborious. And if you want to try to keep your enthusiasm, your bubble up, um, it's very hard to do if it's really drawn out. It gets a bit like drawing teeth at the dentist, you know. Uh, you have a great scene with Jared Leto at a table where he is showing you um, some of his drawings. And yeah. Jared really uh, disappeared into the role with his prosthetics and the makeup. And I'm curious, did you did you meet, what was it like seeing that that um, the prosthetics and everything for the first time. And did you have any idea it was him or did he try to play some sort of game where he's like standing with you and you have no idea it's him? No, when he appeared, I mean, I knew that was the person, but I, 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 I knew Jared was, I hadn't met Jared before. So when he appeared, I, I, I thought it was one of the Italian producers. Uh, and, and then he started doing something he didn't do the actual lines that were written. He was throwing in loads of stuff. And I thought, this is extraordinary. This is really extraordinary. Such a brave actor to, uh, to A, change his appearance so much and get within that. I mean, it's interesting. He said yesterday at the press conference that he, as I do, loves mask work and the way that masks can um, actually show almost more, an actor in a mask can actually show more emotion often than an actor without a mask. And I think he felt he was masked for that. And it, it created this extraordinary character, which when we'd finished the scene, I, I was so admiring of. I didn't know which takes, because he did things very differently, we'd use. Um, but as an actor, I had to uh, be ready for whatever he threw out. You guys were great together. I got to stop there and I'm just going to say congrats. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Have a fantastic day. Pleasure talking to you.